Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Tech Tiger Academy. I'm Ravi Malhotra, your instructor uh, for this entire Checkpoint NGX R80.40 series. Okay, uh, we have reached lecture number 19. Uh, in this series, right, we are using VMware as a platform to demonstrate all capabilities of Checkpoint Firewall. Okay, so this is lecture number 19. Uh, this in this lecture, we will talk about the gateway object, right? The firewall object. It's very important. The most the most commonly used object in this whole Checkpoint configuration is the gateway object. There are so many configurations and features and options that are configurable on the gateway object. So I will try all my best to walk you through each and every option available, and I'll and I'll try to uh, explain each and every option. You know, be it be it be it big or small. So, so these are all the previous lectures and labs, right? In this series, we have reached lecture number 19. Okay. So, so let us start, guys. So the firewall or the gateway object. So uh, most of the things you know, but then let me try to uh, give you some basics around the gateway object. Firewall and administrator need to create a gateway object in order to manage a gateway. That's very simple theory. In checkpoint, before you should be able to manage a gateway, you need to create a gateway object, right? Um, you need to create a gateway object with the IP address, and once once you create a gateway object, you you remember you need to establish SIC, right? Using activation key. That's very important stuff. Second option is that there is a secure internal communication channel between security management server and gateway. That's very important to understand because any communication happening between security management server and gateway is happening over an SSL channel. Okay. So, and the communication which happens between security management server and gateway is bidirectional in nature. So let me tell you why. Security management server sends policies to the gateway and gateway sends logs to the management server. That's the reason why I call it that this is bi-directional communication. Uh, if you want to manage 10 firewalls from the same management server, ensure that you have to create firewall object for each firewall. It doesn't mean that you just create one object for a gateway and you should be able to manage all the gateways. No, it is not possible. You can manage 10, you can manage 100 you can manage 200 gateways okay from the management server depending on the configuration you have depending on the licenses but n number of gateways you want to manage you have to have n number of objects on the on the management server now every gateway object basically fetches topology databases upon successful sick establishment which means it fetches all interfaces and details so those who have just gone through my previous videos, right, they know the they know the statement that the moment your secure internal communication is established, the gateway object is not just an object, it actually becomes a firewall, you know. That means that gateway learns all the interfaces of your uh, gateway, the topology, the routing table, and from the interfaces that it has learned it can tell you which one is an external and which one is an internal okay and uh, these blades are checked by default uh, in the firewall object so only the firewall module which is actually the stateful inspection next generation firewall feature only this feature is enabled and checked by default as as a blade in this gateway object okay so i'm moving to the so let me also try to navigate you stuff uh, as in parallel. So that's my that's my smart center server, guys. That's my VMware. As I said, that I'm using VMware Workstation as a platform. I have smart center server one. I have I have firewall one. Okay, and I am logged in to the security management server over here. That's my smart center server object. That's my gateway object. That's my policy. 
the security policy with all the rules that I have created. Just just wait for a few seconds, it will come up. Okay. So immediately I will walk you through the gateway object. All right, so that's the policy that I have, okay? These are all, all the rules I have created. Let me take you to the gateway object. That's the gateway object. I'll double click on this gateway object. Okay. So the moment SICK is established, okay, it actually fetches the interface's details. That's what I want to show you here. So it tells you that these are all the interfaces. And this interface is has fetched automatically and on the basis of default route, it clearly dictated that ETH1 is an external interface, right? The rest all interfaces are internal, okay? So that's what I wanted to say in the slide. And every, okay? And these blades are checked by default in the firewall object. Let me show you that. Let me go to general properties back. And in the general properties, you see that there are three basically sections, network security, threat prevention, and management. In network security, you'll see that so many blade options are available for you, but at present, only firewall blade is checked right now, all right? That's an IP address, that's the name, here's a SIC activation key that we have given, and these are all the options that I will, that I will explain and discuss in this lecture, okay? Let me go back to the slides, guys. So let me move to the next slide now. Network security and threat prevention blades. So in this slide, what I'm trying to say that there are so many additional blades available for you to check and um, for additional functionalities. We just saw that, you know, firewall is checked by default, but then we have IPsec VPN, we have mobile access, we have application control, we have URL filtering, we have identity awareness, we have content awareness, quality of service, monitoring, data loss prevention, anti-spam and email security. All these blades comes under network security header. Then there is an additional header which is threat prevention. Okay, Under the threat prevention we have sandblast threat emulation technology blade, we have sandblast threat extraction blade, and we have Threat Prevention IPS, which stands for Intrusion Prevention System, Anti-Bot and Antivirus, okay? That's that. That's what we see here. Here's a Network Security a section. Here is, an, here is a Threat Prevention section. Here is a Management section. It's the Sandblast and it's a Threat Prevention. In the Sandblast, we have Threat Emulation, Threat Extraction, and here we have IPS, Anti-Bot, Antivirus. Let me let me take you to the real firewall object. Here we see that network security, IPsec, VPN, mobile access. It's just a matter of clicking. That's it. You, you just click on it, and the moment you click on it, you will see that you will see an option, additional option to configure more settings. Okay. You uncheck it, this option will go away. You click on mobile access. <coughs> Similarly, sorry, it's taking time. Let me cancel. So all these uh, options are there for you. You can check them. Application control, URL filtering. Okay. If I go to threat prevention, there we have threat emulation, threat extraction under Sandblast. Okay. And uh, under threat prevention, we have IPS. And then we have antibot, as well as we have, you know, this antivirus. So all these are additional blades available for you. Ensure that, right, you, you you have enough memory, you have enough CPU. Make sure that your firewall is right-sized before you check these options because they, they eat performance of your box, okay? <clears throat> now, now the next whole uh, PPTs will only talk about, will only navigate the gateway object, okay? So... There are so many tabs available for you in the gateway object. There's a network management. 
there's a NAT, HTTPS inspection, proxy, ICAP, platform portal, mail transfer agent, logs and all that. That's what you can see here, right? Here we have network management tab. Here we have NAT tab. Here we have ICAP server, antibot, antivirus, you know, platform portal, user check, mail transfer agent, IPS, logs and all that, right? Let me uncheck a couple of options which I don't want, at least in this lecture. We'll do them later, right? So, so these are some of these additional tabs and every tab has so many features as well as so many concepts behind that we'll understand. So, the most important thing that I want to focus in this particular lecture is the logs section of the gateway object. So <clears throat> that's the one I just want to focus in this lecture. Now gateway object provides several log settings. Okay. Upon successful SIC establishment between security management server and gateway, gateway is configured to send logs and alerts to security management server. It's very important guys. Let me tell you that the security management server is also a log server as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, gateways, once their SIC is established, they are configured to send their logs uh, to the management server. When they send the logs and how they send the logs, that is configurable, right? That means you want these logs to be sent only when the log file reaches 1 GB of size. Or maybe you want to ensure that every day when it is, you know, 11.55 PM at night, the whole log file of the entire day should be sent to the security management server and all that. So, so many options are there. Logs are saved in the disk space of gateway. You can take several actions upon different log threshold value in a gateway. If the disk space of a gateway is below certain threshold value, then you can issue alert. You can start deleting old files. You can stop logging. And you can also reject all connections when logs are not saved. You can also reserve specific size in a disk for packet capturing as well during debug and troubleshooting. Sometimes during debug, right, you need to run packet capture. And you need to run packet capture for, let's say, the 10 and 15 minutes uh, consecutive. Believe me, running a packet capture for 10 and 15 minutes actually need a lot of storage because a lot of data is debugged and stored for that analysis. So you can also reserve a specific amount of size in a hard disk only for the packet capture purpose. You can also set up a dedicated log server as well. Assume that you know that your security management server is a log server. But you also know that the security management server is managing a lot of other gateways and you just want to split the role of logs and all that. So then in that case, you can create a dedicated log server and you can forward all the logs of the gateway to that log server only, right? Instead of the security management server. You can modify log file size truncation either on reaching specific size in megabytes or at specific schedule time. So these are so many settings uh, r related to the log files that you can that you can take in this gateway object under the log subsection. Okay, so I'll walk you through that. In the gateway object, on the left hand side, you'll see logs. Log settings play a very critical role in the performance of the gateway object. That's true. You can select to save logs locally on the gateway machine. That's true. Here we see that. You can select to save log files and alerts to a security management server, which is the default setting only if SIC is established with a gateway and a management server. That's the option number two. This is checked automatically the moment SIC is established. Okay. You can select to save log files both to security gateway and security management server also. So you can check both the options also. Okay, and it will work. So let me let me walk you through this option. I'll go to my that's my gateway object, right? And here we have logs section. 
under the log section i see that we can we can select that you know save logs locally on this machine on this machine means that this is tech tiger academy firewall one send gateway logs and alerts to server smart center server one okay so you can either select this 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 option is selected by default because sick is established or you can also check this option save log files locally on this machine and you can click on okay okay so either either one works for you let me take you to the next slide it's very important to understand the local storage options in a gateway because the performance of the gateway depends purely on this option and you can improve the performance of the gateway uh, from this particular subsection here it's important for a firewall administrator to maintain the local storage on a gateway to ensure that firewall performance is always best if the local storage uh, in the local storage you can configure to start deleting old log files remember that you can start deleting old log files in a sequential order when the disk space is below either 5 GB or 15 percent of disk space or any custom threshold value okay let's say that if the disk space you know is uh, is just 20 percent left right or it, or it's just 5 GB left you can configure to start deleting old log files in a sequential order so if if today is let's say that 11th October if this option is checked and if the threshold value is matched it will look at the most recent log file assume that that's a first September okay it will immediately start deleting the log files from the from the very bottom of the log indexing right so so so, so this is what I mean it will start deleting all log files in a sequential order if the local storage you can configure to issue alerts logs you can issue alerts logs mail alert SNMP trap alert and do nothing if the disk space is below default 20 M bytes or 10 percent of the total disk space or any other custom value you can also change it you can also reserve 500 megabytes of disk space for packet capturing you can also define any custom value for packet capturing reservation okay now let me let, let me take you through the gateway object so that's the object just double click on this object and uh, I will take you to the logs section I will expand the logs section I will take you to the local storage see that I have two options you know you can measure free disk space in either megabytes or in percentage when disk space is below 3000 megabytes okay if the disk space is below 3000 megabytes and bytes available do what issue alert log mail alert SNMP trap alert or something user define alert number one whatever it is but do nothing okay if the disk space is below 5000 megabytes start deleting all files if you configure percentage what happens here is if the disk space is below 10 percent or if the disk space is below 15 percent then start deleting all file you can also change it okay as per your needs whatever you want this is changeable okay and preserve 500 megabytes of packet capturing for packet capturing or you can also say reserve 15 percent for packet capturing of the total disk space so this section that we have seen is under the local storage value <coughs> all right so here we can click on ok and it will accept the values okay uh, let me double click again on the gateway object and let me go back to the slide next one is the additional logging configuration it's it's important uh, in the in in the additional logging configuration the first setting is the log forwarding so you can configure your gateway to forward logs to to a management server to a log server okay and you can configure your gateway to forward logs at specific 
scheduled interval also okay log forwarding is an important section in log settings security management server acts as a log server you can configure and choose to forward logs to a log server security management server if you have more than one security management server then you will see a list of all log servers available to you okay let me show you that i will go to the firewall object I'll go to logs, I'll expand logs, I'll go to additional logging configuration. Here is the log forwarding settings. It says the forward log files to log server. It, it is actually showing you the smart center server one. And then log forwarding schedule. Okay. And that's something we'll do in the next slide, right? So this is how we can uh, configure uh, the log forwarding to to more than one smart center server. I show you that. Take an example. If uh, I turn on my smart center server 2 as a secondary smart center server, and if I establish the SIC between smart center server 1 and smart center server 2, then automatically you will also see smart center server 2 in this list here as well. Okay. Here. Right. But at present, you're only seeing smart center server one as an option okay so this is the log forwarding in the log forwarding next section you can also choose the specific schedule or create a new schedule for gateways to forward logs to a log server there are many scheduled objects given for a choice so fetch interval right IPS update log file event malware schedule all these are options given to you, but you can also create a new scheduled event by clicking on the manage button here. Okay. And you will create it as per your choice. That's that's what I'm showing you here. S screenshot one and two. I'm giving you a use case. Create a new scheduled object to forward logs every day at 11.15 p.m. Name this object as forward log file. So for this, you need to click on manage, you need to click on new, you need to click on scheduled event, and then how you can do it, okay? Let me show you that. I will go to, so this is the one I have created, but let me create another one for you. I'll click on manage, new, scheduled event, forward log file. Let me, FRW, forward log file one log file one okay forward logs to the to the to the log server at this specific time and date okay color this object as pink so these logs should be this log should should start happening right at 11 40 p.m okay or you can even configure a specific hour uh, minute as well as seconds okay and it should happen every day or it should happen every let's say that you know uh, Saturday and Sunday or maybe days of a month whatever you can do that okay let's say that every day click on okay and that's all so just choose it over here and then you can click on okay <coughs> All right, guys. So, so that was we 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 understood the log forwarding section of the gateway object. Let me take you to the next slide. The next slide talks about the log file settings. It's very important, guys. Logs are written in .txt file format. Logs are named as per specific day and date. Right. Format of a log file name is. Uh, yyyy mmdd underscore three times zero okay dot log so this is the name of the log file this is the this is the real screenshot from my gateway name of the current log file is always fw dot log firewall log you can also open log files of any previous day for log analysis during troubleshooting course it's very important guys you can also export log files to the dot csv format 
uh, into Microsoft Excel for further analysis. And you can also run queries as well as per as per specific requirement, you know. Log files. Uh, so that's what I'm just going to show you now. So again, I will just click on the gateway object. I will go to logs. I will go to additional logging. And here we have log files, okay. Uh, so it says that you know create a new log file when the current file is uh, larger than 1000 MB so that's the one condition it says that you know create a new log file when the current log file is larger than 1000 MB well, let's say that you want to create it just 100 MB of log files and create a new log file on schedule time and you can also uh, you know just just maybe you can use the same you know forward log at at every 2355 it should rather create a new log file okay these are the two options that you can configure <clears throat> and uh, now let me take you to the dashboard now if we click on this uh, logs and monitor So here it will take you to the logs. So the first thing I want you to experience is that it is actually showing you the current log file is fw.log. That's the current log file. This is not stored as of now, okay? But the moment you click on here, you click on file, you click on open log files, okay? You can see that all the log files created for you, you know? 5th October, 10th October, 4th October, 3rd October, 2nd October, 1st October and these are the specific sizes of a log file and all these log files are stored to the to the management server which is 200.50 okay. that's the one thing you can open any log file let's say that 28th September open So that's a so 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 that's a one log right for our 28th September. Okay. Uh, let me choose one another log file <clears throat> from 10th October. Today is 11th from the 10th October, and uh, yeah, here it is. So it is actually showing as a 10th October log files. See that you know, you just double click on any log file on on any log, and you will be able to see that you know. It was uh, done yesterday, you know, 10:25 and all that. <clears throat> you can also uh, export to the CSV format. You just need to open the log file and you need to select the name. You need to save it, and that's all. Okay, let me click on save. You want to replace it? Yes. And so once it is done, you can you can open it. So that's the file which has been exported to the Microsoft Excel, right? This is in CSV format and it has all the fields for you, the source, the destination, the source IP, origin, type, action and all that, okay? So, <clears throat> so that's all guys, so that's all that what we can do and that we have seen that create a new log file when the current file is larger than specific size or you can choose to create log file at specific schedule types, okay? Next is the next is the advanced setting in the additional logging configuration. You can choose to stop logging as well in case the available disk space is below configured threshold value. You can also choose to reject all connections when logs are not saved. Okay, you can just choose to reject all connections. You can also choose the frequency of updating account logs. Account log means audit logs. Every 
3600 seconds account logs are also known as audit logs audit log records and reveals all actions either permitted or denied by any user with complete description of action items cost logging is turned on by default TCP state logging is set to never as a default setting, but you can configure it as per needs. So this is the SNP for the advanced settings. When the disk space is below 100 bytes, stop logging because we are already running too low with the hard disk size that if we do not stop the logging, the firewall may crash. And the moment you have stopped logging, you can also choose, you know, it's a choice for you that also start rejecting all connections as well when logs are not saved, okay? Update account logs every 3600 seconds. This option is already enabled for you. And TCP state logging is set to never, but you can choose it, you know, if when connections closed ungracefully with the fin, connections closed gracefully, or when the connection state changed, okay? In case of a proxy, okay? So all these things will also be recorded in the logs uh, file, okay? <clears throat> Let me show you that. Let me go to the gateway object. That's the gateway object. And uh, that's the logs, that's the additional logging. And here we have advanced settings. It says that when disk space is below 5% or let's say that when disk space is below 8% stop logging and also uh, reject all connections when logs are not saved. Update account log every 3600 seconds instead let's make every 600 seconds and include TCP when it is closed ungracefully and just click on OK. Right. So these are the additional settings that you can do in the advanced settings. Okay. Well, the next option is an optimization in the gateway object. Let me let me show you that. I will just click on the gateway object again. In the gateway object, I'll go to optimizations over here. You'll see that, you know, uh, the threshold, calculate the maximum limit for concurrent connections. So, if you want to do it automatically, then it all depends on the memory as well as the CPU performance available to the box. And you can also specify the maximum concurrent connections limit to a specific number, you know, 25,000 to, you know, anything, whatever you like, right, 250,000, whatever. So, concurrent connections define the throughput capacity of a firewall or a gateway. With checkpoint gateway, it's a choice of an administrator to strictly limit the concurrent connections to a specific number or keep it automatic, okay? Similarly, you can set limit for concurrent IKE negotiations and concurrent tunnels for VPN connections. Let me show you that. Similarly, over here, instead of 1000, at, at present, why this option is not enabled? Because, uh, right, let me go to general. The moment you click on IPsec VPN over here, right? What will happen now? You will be able to go to optimization. And now you see that. Maximum concurrent connections is, maximum concurrent VPN tunnels is, right? Just change the values, okay? And you can also click on enable drop optimization just to optimize the security policy performance. And you can click on okay. Well, you should be between one and 10,000. Okay, let's make it 10,000, 10,000. All right, done. So this is an optimization setting. So again, uh, it's it, it just a recap. Concurrent connections limit can be set to either automatic or it can be set to manual with a specific number. The IKE negotiation default value is set to 1,000. Maximum concurrent tunnels by default is set to 10,000 and drop optimization feature is not enabled by default, but you can also enable it, you know. So that's all what we have seen. Capacity optimization, it is either automatically or you can manually limit the number. VPN capacity, it is grayed out. The reason it is grayed out is that because VPN blade was not checked. 
the moment you enable the VPN blade, you can configure the settings and you can enable the drop optimization and you can save the policy. <clears throat> All right, guys. So next option is ISP redundancy. That's, that's the simple stuff. In case you have two ISPs, as, as in my case, I have actually two ISPs right now, you know. One is Tata, one is Sifi. So then you can just create a harmony between them. You can either load sharing or you can make them as a primary or secondary. And you can use the and, and, and you can use this advantage in case if the Tata goes down. So then all your connection should actually work right with Sifi as well. So organizations sometimes acquire two links from service providers. Firewall administrator should be able to maintain and manage redundancy between internet links. You can configure either active active or active passive as a redundancy model. And you should also configure weight with each link. Okay. Let me show you that. So that's that's the last slide of this lecture. I'll go here, I will go, I'll go over here. <clears throat> I'll go to this is an optimization. I'll go to other and I'll go to ISP redundancy. So, so that's what I'll do now. I'll do ISP support ISP redundancy. I'll say yes. I'll say add. I'll configure at Tata. Interface 137. This is one. Let me let me make it next hop 192, 168, 137.1. Okay. Uh, it's okay. Add next one is Sifi. This is this is 237. 192, 168, 237.1. All right. Okay. You can configure the weight between them. Let's make it uh, two. And so it has 66, it has 33, right? So this is how you configure ISP redundancy between links. If you want to have more uh, more in-depth theory as well as lab on ISP redundancy, then I have lecture number 37, which is which is only on ISP redundancy only, right? You can just please watch it with the exact lab, right? So that's all, guys. That's that's all with the gateway object. There are so many other things in the gateway object as well. You know, I can spend maybe two hours just on the gateway object. You know, there is a fetch policy option. Even there is a hit count option. Even in other, there is a persistency option, right? There is a permission to install. So many things are there. You know, uh, mirror and decrypt. So so we will explore all these features in in next videos, right? So that's all, guys. Uh, so. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, please uh, guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please like this video, leave some comments and forward it to your friends uh, so that they can also learn and they can get some good jobs in market. So <clears throat> that's all guys. Uh, so that's all. Uh, we are done with this video. Thanks. Thanks a lot everybody. Have a wonderful day to all of you.